Welcome back inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, everybody. After a two, three week hiatus, fellas, we're back in here. Uh, seems to, like it, I think it's only been a week and a half. <laughs> it has it. It seems like it's been an eternity since we last spoke to Ryan Day. Actually, got to talk to him a little bit. Gene Smith spoke for what, 30 seconds, and the Peach Bowl officially invited Ohio State. Uh, spoiler alert, they accepted the invite. Ohio State is officially heading to the Peach Bowl now for number one Georgia versus number four Ohio State. They even gave us yeah. some free Chick-fil-A on the way out. 1961 seems so long ago, man, when Ohio State turned down a trip to the Rose Bowl because they thought the tail was wagging the dog. <laughs> but that's another story. Well, they didn't they didn't turn down this trip. Uh, no. We didn't again, we didn't turn down the free Chick-fil-A that's sitting in front of me right now off camera. That's Andy Backstrom. That's the 40-year vet to May. I'm Spencer Holbrook. This is a practice report slash rapid reaction slash bowl report slash championship drive presented by Byers Auto. A lot to get to. Uh, a lot of words from Ryan Day, not a lot of answers from Ryan Day. Um, you know, declining to uh, bash the NCAA, which is fine. I, I didn't expect him to do that. Um, talked about how uh, busy this time of year is with all of the all of the moving parts right now: transfer portal, recruiting cycle, bowl preparation, recruiting your own players back to the roster, uh, and then also was asked about some roster decisions and, and roster management. Uh, declined to talk about injuries yet again, Tim. Biggest takeaway after hearing from Ryan Day and these Buckeyes uh, here inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on a fine uh, December Tuesday. Well, from a bulletin standpoint, when he uh, indicated uh, they may have a they may have more to say about Travion Henderson and his availability uh, in a few days, uh, the running back, of course, Travion Henderson, who's been dealing with that uh, foot sprain situation, which is basically you know ligament situ uh, problems and things like that. Basically, is in a toe sprain, but that sounds really benign. It is not benign at all, um, which you and I have talked about before on this. Uh, saying he might have a, a clarification on that in three or four days or two or three or four days indicates uh, maybe Travion may be up in the air when it comes to playing uh, in the Peach Bowl. So uh, Mayan Williams, it looks like he's going to be back. Uh, Dallin Hayden, he was asked about Dallin Hayden and why he didn't play as much as uh, as all of us expected him to do against Michigan. They just thought uh, Chip Trainum was the best guy for that moment. And what he brought up in that, in, subtly in that, was that from a pass protection standpoint, probably Chip Trainum gave them the better option uh, yeah. because that game evolved into them having to throw the ball. So, you know, that clarified a few things in that regard. But uh, just from a bulletin standpoint, that. But then past that, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, Six million dollars uh, from the uh, ch from the uh, Chick Fil A Peach Bowl. Uh, two million goes to Ohio State's expenses, and the other four million basically go to Ohio State in the Big Ten. So uh, uh, that was pointed out by Gary Stoken, the uh, president. I, I get him mixed up. I just call him the executive director of the Peach Bowl, but he's got some other uh, uh, highfalutin title. But the bottom line is that's interesting <laughs> money uh, still to this day. Yeah. Andy, big takeaways after hearing from, yeah, we also talked to the Peach Bowl execs, uh, the media director, the uh, CEO, as I called him, whatever. Gary uh, his title is, he's a, an important person with the C, with the Peach Bowl. Talk to all hey, those he's people. He's on my podcast this week, along with Andy Backstrom, by the way. Nice little plug there, Tim. Andy, biggest takeaways after hearing from s some interesting people there in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Yeah, I think from Ryan Day, I think my biggest takeaways were the big picture questions that were asked. While he didn't give maybe the most specific answers, he did respond to some questions about the timing of it all, right? This is December, and he joked that, you know, when he was younger, as we all do, with December, we think about the holidays, we think about time with family, friends, rejoicing. Well, when you're a coach, you can't really do much of that. You don't sleep much. He talked about, you know, the combination of the transfer portal, recruiting, preparing for the bowl game. It's all just happening all at once, and it's really hard to handle NIL. You left NIL, that NIL. Right, yeah. of course. He was asked about that as well. Keeping pace in NIL, again, didn't give many specifics about that, but you can get the impression that it's all kind of boiling over, and as it would for any coach in this position, um, and you're trying to balance and juggle it all at once. So that stuck out to me. Um, I, I think it's very clear, even without words, just the way he kind of feels about this situation and understandably a little bit frustrated with having to deal with all that at once. I think he even said like, yeah, sometimes you, you do find yourself asking the question, where is the NCAA? What like, are we doing here? Yeah, what are we doing here? Um, and, you know, it's, it's a valid question to be asked. So I think it's important to keep that in mind as, as this is all going on. Yes, they're preparing for the Peach Bowl. Yes, there's, there's a chance for, you know, going to the national championship, but all the while, 
there's just so much every single day that this program is working. Yeah, and the, and the question he should be saying, where was the NCAA five years ago when they could have figured out a lot of this stuff and it not gotten to the point to where it became law, law that you can establish NIL situations for players and entice them with it. That's basically what's going on. It is, it's got to be the most uncomfortable time ever to be on the recruiting trail or even be delving into the portal, transfer portal, of like, okay, because like he said, it has gone from like uh, just uh, baby, basically talk behind the scenes to like sort of like uh, interesting talk to now that is the number one thing you're being asked about uh, in recruiting and transfer portal is what's the NIL going to do for me? Which, which then you have to defer them to maybe someone else to answer those questions. And uh, we're in a very interesting time in uh, major college sports, uh, college football in particular. By the way, Ohio State plays in a national semifinal in 20 days, 19, 18 days maybe, uh, a little under three weeks. And here we are having to ask about signing day, having to ask about the transfer portal, NIL. Um, I think it's wrong. I think it's stupid. I think it's disgusting that they try to pack all of this into one month. You know, like Doug LaMaurice, Cleveland.com over there, uh, good friend of, of all of us, uh, said you don't have the draft and free agency at the exact same time as the as the postseason in the NFL Playoffs, because you yeah. know why? Because if you try to do that, everyone would say you're stupid. Yeah. So the fact that they are doing all of this right now <laughs> is stupid. And I just want to talk about when how, would you do it though? That's the big question. When would you do all this? I don't I don't get paid to decide that. I get paid to talk about uh, Jalen Carter against Luke Whippler and Matthew Jones and Donovan Jackson. That's what I'd like to talk about. I get paid to, to talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Keely Ringo and Stetson Bennett against uh, Tommy Eichenberg when he tries to use his legs. And, and here we are having to talk about how many millions of dollars some 16-year-old is going to garner when, when he chooses between Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama. At the same exact time we're trying to talk about the Peach Bowl, it's infuriating. And I can't even imagine what it's like in the coaches' offices right now yeah. because I hate it. I, but, you know, it, it's all happening at once, and it's just so much to try to take in. Um, and fans, I mean, think about being a fan right now. I mean, I remember, like I've said this before, growing up, I was an Alabama fan because I was born and raised in Alabama and moved to Texas. Oh, really? But Joe Namath was going to be there for four years at Alabama when he signed in 1961 with Alabama. You knew he was going to be there. Hey, you know, who knows what was going on behind the scenes back then? I was a naive, uh, you know, uh, eight to uh, nine to t uh, 11 year old. But the bottom line is now you're a fan and you would get attached to a player or whatever. He may be he may be playing for your arch rival next year. You know, from the transfer. I mean, this is a this is a quite confusing time. But like you said, what gives it clarity is Ohio State is playing Georgia. And, they're, and Ohio State is playing in the Peach Bowl for the very first time with a trip to the national championship on the line. That's the, almost the only clear thing that's going on right now in college football is there is a playoff and you have a chance to win a national championship and Ohio State is part of that. I agree with you. Yeah, there's a reason that the NIL figure isn't up on that board back there and beat and then the Georgia logo is on that, that board. Uh, they're focused on the Peach Bowl. And Ryan Day talked about that a little bit, Andy. He was like, yes, 2023 roster, Obviously a concern. You've got to be looking toward the future, but you know, you're trying to win a national championship right now. And I do think Ohio State's doing a good job of keeping the focus, especially on this practice field, on what can they do to beat Georgia. Yeah, and there's only been two guys that have entered the portal from Ohio State at this point this season. So I think that helps too, because you've got guys that are just locked in and they're trying to prepare for this college football playoff game. Mm -hmm. And I think that delays that process a little bit, which would help you in terms of figuring out your roster a little bit. Um, and then the other thing I'll say is to shift back to the Peach Bowl, the, the folks from the Peach Bowl talked about some of the seating arrangements. There's 2,000 extra standing room only seats, or I don't even call them seats, spots in the stadium yeah, at uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And they're looking at like 78 or 79,000 people in there. And they actually broke it down for us. They said that the original seating was sold out in July, but Ohio State and Georgia both get 13,000 seats. 500 of those are reserved for the bands each. So it's about 12,500 for each school. Um, and they said that those tickets for Ohio State were gone within like three days, I think. Yeah. So, you know, just Gene Smith talked about that too. Like this is a place that Ohio <laughs> State hasn't played before. They haven't been in the Peach Bowl. Um, they wanted to go there and it's, you know, he mentioned for their East Coast fans, it's been something that has been helpful in terms of selling tickets. So that was just interesting to come up, especially with how much Rose Bowl dialogue we had yep. going into 
you know, the month of December after the Michigan loss and talking about going out west versus, you know, east, I thought that was uh, something that stuck out to me. Isn't it, isn't it funny, though? I was bringing that up, remember, and I was getting shot down about, the, about how much Ohio State would like to play in the Peach Bowl. Uh, way back in September and October, and I'm not slamming anybody on this dais, uh, but the bottom line is uh, uh, Ohio State has not been there. They've wanted to go there a couple, three times. The opportunity uh, didn't work out for them, and, and like uh, uh, Gary Stoken uh, pointed out, he and Gene Smith, I think, had that conversation, uh, I think, of the weekend of the Wisconsin game about how much it would be cool for Ohio State to get to play in a place that's never played before. And, you know, this idea, yeah, it's going to be – it's going to be interesting to see what the crowd makeup is. We'll get into that later when we're down there. Uh, but here's what you got to remember about these playoff games, too. Uh, those tickets, like you said, went on sale. Bulk of the tickets went on sale way back when. People buy those. Get on Ticketmaster or whatever right now, whatever your favorite uh, uh, aftermarket uh, ticket play. Not a sponsor, there, Tim. There are plenty. There are plenty of tickets available there. because. You know, yeah, it's called market. playing the futures market, right. you know, and uh, you buy a ticket for whatever they go for. And then because it's, you know, it's happened to Ohio State almost every bowl game they've ever been to is to get that extra ticket. People have bought them ahead of time and put, put them back on there. That's a, a subject for another day, maybe. But you can get if you really want to go to the Peach Bowl, you can get there and you can, you know, if you're willing to pay the money. And that's what's going to be interesting is to see how that aftermarket goes and who buys those tickets. I've got, I think, seven, eight family members heading down to Atlanta for the Peach Bowl. Ohio State should be well represented there. Yeah. I think Ohio State will be represented there. I, I find it odd that somebody would buy a ticket to the Peach Bowl in July. I don't. But obviously it's for the secondary market. But, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to tell the CEO of the Peach Bowl how to do his job. Oh, no, you want to sell put tickets. Those, yeah. Put those things on sale the day that the game gets announced. <laughs> yeah, it, well, what if it's a crappy matchup? Well, then the people are going to sell them off and not show up anyway. And plus, plus the way it works, the way commerce works, you want money in hand. You know what I mean? It's like it's like if you buy an airline ticket and all of a sudden you get bumped from that flight. You know, you understand what I mean? There are all kinds of reasons why you put things on on sale early. It, it also promotes uh, the local uh, backing of your endeavor, etc. I mean, I understand totally why it's been going on forever. I just think it fuels the secondary market to make a lot of money. Well, and yeah. the secondary market is making a lot of money. Uh, but I'm very excited to see my family down there. I'm excited to see the Ohio State Buckeyes down there. Uh, both of you, I'm excited to see you guys down there as well. The three of us will be making the trip to Atlanta in just a little under two weeks now. Yeah, let's we'll make be one of the comment. Are you about to wrap up? Because I am. I, I did ask uh, Ryan Day about the passing of Mike Leach and stuff and this you know and and he had just earlier talked about this workload that these guys are not yeah yeah I'm sure it contributed you know to to the uh, stress and strain for like Mike Leach uh, one of the more entertaining uh, major college football coaches of all time and stuff but also a really good a revolutionary coach in terms of innovation uh, offensively and things like that but it's just so sad to hear of the passing of this young man at 61 I can say that because I'm 68 but the, the stress and strain these coaches are under on a daily basis but then gets ramped up in December uh, is on display for anyone yeah they make a lot of money but there's a lot going on in Ryan Day's mind <laughs> you know while he's sitting there answering questions from us he's probably thinking about 10 other things you understand what I'm saying and so uh, rest in peace of uh, Mike Leach one of the one of the in more interesting characters to ever come along in in uh, major college football yeah Tim while on that subject, I was, I was listening to the Sirius XM college football station on the way over here to this, and Urban Meyer was on talking about Mike Leach and how many times he had been on a fishing trip with Mike Leach in, in Key West. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you heard Rick Neuheisel talking about Mike Leach. You've seen people from every corner of the country talk about Mike Leach. This was a person who was beloved in the coaching community, respected in the coaching community. Everyone knew how quirky he was, uh, how interesting he was, and, you know, kind of polarizing in the interview room. I wasn't crazy about all of the, the, the kooky little antics, but, you yeah. know, you, you lose that. When you lose that, <coughs> it makes you kind of think about But he was genuine it. in that regard. Just like Mac Brown is one of the great people you will ever, ever meet in your life. Mac Brown has not changed from day one to now. I mean, one of the one of the great 45 minutes to an hour I ever spent was talking with him when he was the head coach at University of Texas in 2005 uh, in his office there that overlooked, uh, 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 well, it's now DKR Memorial Stadium. Uh, but uh, they're just different guys that come along that make an impression other than 
just how they win or lose games. And Mike Leach clearly was one of those fellas. Yeah, the coaching world lost a, a legend. Ryan Day obviously sent his condolences, his thoughts, prayers yes. uh, to the Mississippi State community, as do we at Letterman Row. Uh, and, you know, that, that program has to try to move on. Ohio State is here in Columbus trying to move forward with transfer portal, NIL, dollar amounts, uh, recruiting cycle, and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Getting ready for Darnell. And, uh... Trying to figure out how to stop Darnell Washington, how to stop Brock Bowers, how to contain Jalen Carter. The list goes on and on. Ohio State's got some talent, too. Tim's going to be at the Peach Bowl. Andy's going to be at the Peach Bowl. I'll be there as well, bringing you full coverage of the Ohio State Buckeyes as they prepare for the Georgia Bulldogs on New Year's Eve at 8 p.m. in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Thanks for watching the latest Rapid Reaction practice report. Haven't given the postseason shows a name yet, but we certainly will. Again, Tim, Andy, Spencer, Rapid Reaction, Buyers Auto. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will see you guys back in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Wednesday afternoon for full coverage as we get to talk to some players finally about the Peach Bowl.